this video, I'm taking 50 business owners on this coach to show them behind the scenes of my businesses, how I bought them, why I bought them, so I can help grow their businesses. You're gonna love this video. Those of you that are over 100,000 of revenue turnover in your business, that's most of us, okay? Those of you over half a million of revenue in your business, wow, still most of us. Over the million, anyone got over the million? Okay, there's still a big chunk of you, good. I've wrote a book on marketing, getting customers and lumping now. There's a whole chapter in there of how I think that is one of the smartest and cheapest ways to get customers for your business. So you sent me what probably cost you a fiver, didn't it? Of, you know, stuff with my logo on, because that always gets people's ego going. So look, why don't you buy a printer? Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we've probably spent a hundred grand with you now with bits and bobs just before you send in five quid something in the post. So everyone just, oh, sent them an email and I didn't get the million pound sale. Actually, you have got to be way more proactive than just sending out a bleeding email, haven't you? So take your time at the back. Do, 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 do. I actually bought Marsh Farm for nothing and I got a, what we call a reverse premium where you sort of get paid money to take over. Now I did take on about a million pounds worth of pension, strain and debt, but I managed to service that over a period of time. But those deals are happening all the time. And hopefully by the end of the day, you can see actually there are other creative ways of structuring businesses. To get those deals over the line, you do need to have some history behind you so that people have faith in you. And I believe over the next five years, there's gonna be more of those deals and opportunities. And you gotta hunt. Now, I don't care what sector you're in, people want to get out of their businesses. Now, this was a local authority. They was losing half a million pounds a year when we bought this site eight years ago. We We've spent a lot of money on our looking around it today. It doesn't look in its best position because we are getting ready to reopen for the, for the season. But there are these fantastic opportunities where you can use your cash to improve a business rather than what most people do. They use their cash to acquire the business. Then they've got no cash to improve it. But the main thing is just behind you there, that white sign that says, welcome to Twizzle Top. Half of that barn is a day nursery and we've extended it down the front as well now. What that does, that day nursery gives us, a, by the end of next year will generate a million pounds on this site alone of residual income. So today I know Marsh Farm's going to be quiet because it's grey clouds, it's cold, no bugger wants to be here, most kids are at school etc etc but that place is full, the other one down the front is full and that is generating and that's basically paying all the wages for the whole site then the rest that we do on the leisure side is cream. This site is paying for all the operational overheads of that day nursery. So one of the smartest things that I've learned in business and getting a model is how you can get good, strong sweating of assets in your business. So that day nursery, no rent, no rates, the electric's already covered, people want to send their children to a place like this rather than my competitors that have just got a standalone day nursery. Good morning everyone, welcome to Malaga. <laughs> the first place we're going to is Red Lions Business Park, which we bought about 15 months ago. I was going to get this finance through my bank. We was completing in March 2020. Who knew what happened in that month? The bank said, look, look can we just wait and see what's going on with this uh, crazy world that we was in? And I was determined to carry on doing that. And then we borrowed like a million quid through Sybils and stuff. And so they said, look, you can't have both like they usually do. I went to the owner and said, look, I've got the deposit. Shall I just give it to you and pay you privately over 15 years on a private mortgage? And they said yes. So first stop on the business tour was going to Marsh Farm. The team asked me loads of questions about why I bought that business, how I'd done it. And we're now here at Red Lines Business Park. They're all on the bus and they're about to ask me some more questions about this particular business before we head off to lunch. Let's find out what those questions are. Why do I do this stuff? Now, number one, yeah, it's obviously the value, the security is gonna go up and up and up. I've got two children and I am consciously aware that what I do, I do not expect many people to do. I mean, I walk through my day and I share it on YouTube. One day I'm making ice cream, day nurseries, farm parks, commercial property. I just don't think running trading businesses is for everyone. It takes a certain sort of person and I'm afraid you lot are those certain sort of people. You push boundaries, it's not for everyone. Most people don't want to do that stuff and they don't want to do it because they're sane. They want to have a life. They're not workaholics and um, they can't handle stress like lots of entrepreneurs can. So should I die young, which I have no intention of doing by the way, I do believe that this stuff can be managed with an agent. It can be managed by a solicitor's firm. So should something happen to me, 
me, my family will have income. They might not necessarily want to run an ice cream company. That's another reason why I invest in this stuff. You know, I care about my family and one day we won't be here. And so they've got something and that I think is easier to run. How do you get yourself in front of these deals? That's a great question. Sunday papers, ladies and gents, have a little section in the broadsheets, the Times Telegraph, the FT, and this was privately sold by Mr. and Mrs. And they said, we own a small industrial park just outside Chumpsford. We're looking to sell it. It was not up for sale with any commercial agent. All the best deals are direct to vendor. When people are privately selling something, not through your local commercial agent, they're usually people that are also nifty for a deal, very entrepreneurial. Uh, also, I have to say, having a YouTube channel and a podcast, being famous to a few, Google famous, uh, LinkedIn famous, to sections that you operate in can be very useful in getting direct to vendor deals. Saying that's how I got Rossi ice cream. It wasn't publicly for sale, but those people knew of me, you know, and that, that helps. Does that answer the question, Mark? just arrived at Bado Park House where we're going to stop for lunch and also I'm going to do a presentation a little seminar which is basically tickling the text buds of what's coming at Business Masterclass in London. All of these guys are coming to Business Masterclass. In fact they're my early bird ticket buyers. If you're a really smart business owner you're going to get your ticket for Business Masterclass two days in London where I'm going to show you all the tactics that I do to grow companies, buy companies, raise money, build fantastic teams so you're not doing everything yourself. Business Masterclass two days in London. It's going to be fantastic. Book your tickets. This is the link that buys your tickets or there's a link in the video description and if you want to find out the sort of stuff I'm going to be doing I'm going to give you a little taste now. Part of the golden rule really is to have some residual income and some high one-off profitable sales. Remembering those three golden things I told you about earlier that the business should always be built around three great KPIs in the business. Number one is average customer value. It's really important we're tracking this. We're tracking this every day in all of our businesses, whether it's childcare, whether it's our farm shop, whether it's Marsh Farm. And then we're going into that in a little bit more detail. We're thinking about how often are they average transacting with us, like that supermarket story that I told you earlier. Do they transact with us regularly? One of the things that I would hate about Bodo Park, no more shaking you off here, Jamie, is that people only buy from you once. You do a great job from them. They have an amazing wedding for you, just hoping they're getting divorced and then they're gonna come back and have a second wedding with you. But you get paid off in a good way when they do buy from you. So I sort of accept that's okay. But what I love is regular return customers. That's why I much prefer the industrial part that Jamie owns that's next door because they're paying you every month. Um, you're always recruiting. Really important. You're always recruiting. Even when you think you're fully staffed, you've got to be hunting. You've got to be looking. You've got to be thinking. And I'm always, always doing this, by the way. I think that's a fantastic, talented person. If they was in our organization, could our business grow even if I haven't got a position for them? Yes, let's employ them. But sometimes you have to kiss a few frogs to find your prince. You're building to sell the bleeding thing even if you have no intention of selling it because it puts you in the right mindset of building something really fantastic. If you're selling your car, you don't you, you get it clean, don't you? You make sure it's a certain level to get maximum possible value. You're going to get it serviced. You're going to get an MOT. Or you know they can bid you down and bid you down and bid you down. So you need to be doing this with your business. You want to have an operations manager, your systems. Who's your management team? Most people are building a profitable job. I'm going to come in and buy your business and I say, I'd like to meet the team. I haven't got any team. It's just me that runs the business. Well, I'm not interested in them because you're just selling me a job. And the rest, ladies and gents, I'm going to teach you a business masterclass. You're going to love it. Two days in London. Because I get annoyed like business owners. You've paid to be there. You've blocked out. And then something menial comes up. You know, there's going to be hundreds of people there. It's going to be an amazing two days. I want to see you there. So what what would be the typical benefits for the vendor to do the vendor finance? What's going to be the benefits of them doing this? Number one, the deal could get done quicker. I think it's on average 80 months it takes to sell a business when it goes up for sale it's a long process selling businesses uh, number two they get the money they want for it sometimes people have got an ego and they say I want a million pound for my business and it might only be worth half a million but you go all right well I'll give you a million pound but I'll pay you over seven years for it um, so they get their million quid they get to say they've sold their business for a million quid um, and it means that you can grow the business and get yourself on your way Give the man a round of applause. That's good, cool, Martin. Has anyone else ever done that to you before? No, I'm the first. <laughs> I thought so.
So what we're going to do here again, we'll put a, we're going to put a day nursery in here where we're trying to bring in the rest of the businesses. So like the vending machines are now owned by Rossi. That slush machine over there, we make all of that. There's an ice cream counter in there. Already in eight months made about 80 grand profit for us as a business. And we're going to make our own coffee soon, Rossi Coffee. One of the big reasons I bought the Rossi brand was to be able to use it as a brand for food services across service. I didn't want a great Marsh Farm coffee or Party Man World coffee so we can use Rossi as the brand that hits all of our other businesses. And when we bought Rossi, we knew we were spending 100 grand a year on slush, quarter of a million pound a year on ice cream. We're spending 100 grand a year on coffee. We're going to buy all that through Rossi, use all their freezer vans and distributions. So we're keeping the cash flow within the business. I just bought everyone here to just show them another business deal structure, how we found this business. We bought this business through finding it on right move. I want to just show them. I didn't want to just stay on the couch. I want to show them that this stuff is possible. If you knock on doors and you go out there and put yourself out there, you can find deals. We found this one. Right, let's get back on the coach. So yeah, this here. We bought this here at six flats. It was owned in a limited company. The, the major, major advantageous thing about this was the stamp duty was 500 pounds to buy this because we bought the company. So it's the shares, the value of the shares, which was 100 quid, 100,000 pounds. So you pay half percent. So uh, yeah, it cost me 500 quid on the stamp duty. And I worked out that we could get close to 60 grand a year rent, 62-ish is it we were planning on getting once we filled it up. And we bought it for 650K. I tried to do all this creative finance to prove it on YouTube, like bridging loans and all that. It's not worth it. Just put the deposit down and get it. That's what I've learned. I charge you so much money on fees and stuff. But I wanted to show you that. The reason I bought that is because I see it as a commercial property. I bought the limited company so I can claim all the interest back. The mortgage is two and a half grand a month because we're paying the capital down and we're going to bring in eventually five, six grand a month. Um, <laughs> this room uh, is going to be where we set the commercial bakery up. So um, we, these are all of our products here that we sell. We sell two and a half thousand of these donuts, two and a half thousand of these donuts every single week, plus these pastries and breads and sourdoughs and stuff like that. That's all going to be made in this room. And this will be operational from next Monday. That's why, as you can see, the white rocks on. There's still a bit of work to do here. So you want a chocolate and vanilla? Chocolate and vanilla, there you go. This is good, the original. Mr. Rossi, start with ice cream vans. You know that, this was the original one that I showed you. So this is the um, finishing room. So basically, I don't know if you see, I know because I paid for it. There's this silver pipe that comes down the middle up here that's like gonna have bits go off of it. So your pasteurizing, which is done in that room further at the back, will come into here and then the ice cream has to age overnight before it can be turned into ice cream. And these are these aging vats, which have 24 hours of churning it up, which makes it into a liquid mix before it gets put in, very similar to that, what, what's made that. So we put a liquid mix in that and then that machine then freezes it again. In front of these four agent vats, you'll see these two big silver metal machines. They're what, you know, turns it into the ice cream. This is, you know, a lot of money in this room. <laughs> We take that out of the vats before it gets made into ice cream. We sell this to ice cream men and, and uh, people that do whippy mix. So whippy mix starts the same. Whether it's you know hard ice cream goes into you know a supermarket ice cream, the mix is all the same. It's just a different way of freezing it, which gives the different taste. I bought this from Italy. So basically, your butter goes in here, your cream goes in here, sugar, uh, all your ingredients. It gets heated up, goes through a homogenizing process, which <laughs> all of the mix to make it nice and creamy. Me. It goes through this uh, stainless steel food grade. You don't want to know how much this was. I'm not even going to tell you. It just looks like a pipe. Well, it's not. It's food safety stainless steel, which just means it's three bazillion times more expensive than normal stainless steel. So we want to get more theatres, more restaurants, because actually theatres spend more on ice cream in, you know, like a pantomime, for example, is where theatres make all their money. So we've got a few theatres and they spend a fortune in December on ice cream and actually none in August. So we need to find those pockets of customers in or leisure is another great one. So this um, up here is where we distribute for all our sites, so all of our venues, uniforms. That's Party Man World, this is Twizzle Tops. You know, all the venues is all kept here. Then they order and we ship it from, from here. And then these guys, also do all of the Amazon and the picking the packing. This is all ice cream packaging. We're storing so much because we're so worried about supply lines at the moment. So yeah, that's what we do up here, right? Let me take you. 
Well, the business bus tour has been a huge success. 50 business owners coming around with me, seeing all of our different properties and businesses. They loved it. They've learned a ton of stuff. And if you want to learn a ton of stuff, don't forget to get your tickets to Business Masterclass. It's going to be a great two-day event in London. Tickets are only a few hundred quid. No selling, just great learning. I'll put a link in the video description or here's where you can get your tickets. If you want to find out more about the Lost Making Ice Cream Company that I bought and how much I've invested in it, go and watch this video here. You're going to love it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.